the curse of Meroz. I'd like to assure you at the outset that our message this morning is not in support of Halloween, which is one of America's favorite celebrations, unfortunately. The Israelites had been oppressed for 20 years by King Yavin of Hatsor, a Canaanite king. And Sisera, the commander of his army, treated the people ruthlessly. The Israelites finally turned back to the Lord and cried out to him for help. You know, during the time of uh, uh, the judges, God called upon Samson to uh, do his work against the Philistines. But this time, the Israelites needed somebody. Deborah, a prophetess and a judge in Israel, sent for Barak. No relation to former President Obama. Amen. Who lived in the land of Naphtali and told him that the Lord wanted him to assemble 10,000 warriors to go against Sisera and his forces. Sisera had at his command 900 chariots of iron and much better weapons than the Israelites. Barak was willing to proceed this if Deborah would accompany him. When Barak attacked, the Lord threw Sisera and all his charioteers and warriors into a panic. The Israelites had an overwhelming victory, and Sisera and his men were all destroyed. Now, this happened about uh, 3,000 to 3,300 years ago. Chapter 4 of the Judges tells the story, and then it is repeated as a song in chapter 5. In the song, we are given the additional facts that some Israelites stayed neutral. Get that? Some Israelites stayed neutral during the battle. Many of these were from the area of Meroz. We are told that the angel of the Lord cursed these fox because they did nothing to help. They were neither hot nor cold. They remained neutral. I have nothing to do with that. I have nothing to do with that. I'm here. Ellen White states, if, if God abhors one sin above another, of which his people are guilty, it is doing nothing in case of an emergency. Indifference and neutrality in a religious crisis is regarded of God as a grievous crime and equal to the very worst type, worst type of hostility against God. Amen. Testimonies, page 3, volume, volume 3, page 280. There are usually two, tied, two, two sides in any controversy. Either you are pro-life or pro-choice. Now, this is, this is a current uh, issue right now. Either you are a Sabbatarian or a non-Sabbatarian. Either you are a vegetarian or a non-vegetarian. Either you are floating or you're sinking. Either you are a Republican or a Democrat. Goodness. Either you are pro-Hamas or pro-Israel. <laughs> but God says, but God says, either you are with me or you are against me. Amen. You cannot be in between. Either you love God 
or you don't love God. Either you serve God or you serve mammon. Either you obey the commandments of God or you will disobey his commandments. Either you will honor God or you will dishonor God. Either you will accept Jesus as your Savior or you will reject Jesus as your Savior. Either you listen to the Holy Spirit or you will ignore the Holy Spirit. Either you will live forever or be lost forever. The United States presidential election will be when? November, November this year. This year, brothers and sisters, 2024. When you go to the polling place, you first present yourself and they will give you a ballot. Then you go to the voting booth. You look at your ballot and vote for a Republican candidate, a Democrat candidate, a candidate of another party, or an independent candidate. In spiritual affairs, there is always a general election going on. Always. When you go to the spiritual polling place, don't look for an independent party candidate on your ballot because there is none. Either you vote for God or you vote for Satan. When you vote, when you vote, either you are with God or you are against God. 6,000 years ago, in the middle of the Garden of Eden, God put a polling place. Did you know that? There was a polling place there. There were two booths in the polling place. In one location, the booth of the Tree of Life. In the other location, the booth of the Tree of the Knowledge of Good and Evil. And the saddest, the saddest of all election stories is our first parents voted no to God. Terrible. And yes to Satan. Under the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And as they say, the rest is history. Moses was now 120 years of age. By the way, this is not Moses. <laughs> he doesn't look 120 years old, but uh, uh, do, do we have anyone living 120 years at this time? But anyway, this is as close as it can get. After 40 years of leading the Israelites from the land of Egypt, Moses summoned all the leaders of Israel before he transferred the mantle of leadership to Joshua prior to crossing the Jordan River into the Promised Land. And he said, This day I call heaven and earth as a witness against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. And that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold on fast to him. For the Lord is your life. And he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Sister White wrote in the Review and Herald, February 25, 1902. Shall not the counsel of Christ have an effect? on the churches. Why halt ye who know the truth between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. Christ's followers have no right to stand on the ground of neutrality. There is more hope for an open enemy than for one who is neutral.
she continues, the gospel message admits no neutrality. It counts all men as decidedly for the truth or against it. If they do not receive and obey, obey its teachings, they are its enemies. Whoa. The question is, where does each one of us stand? Where do you stand? Where do I stand? Are we willing to speak out the truth? Of course, such a speaking out needs to be done in a Christ-like and kind manner. But should we remain neutral in the midst of a religious crisis? In book one of Selected Messages, page 194, Ellen White speaks of the time when John Harvey Kellogg sought to bring pantheistic theories into the Seventh-day Adventist church through his book, The Living Temple. She asks, where are the faithful guardians of the Lord's flocks? Where are his watchmen? Are they standing on the high tower, giving the danger signal, or are they allowing the peril to pass unheeded? She continues, the dangers coming upon us are continually increasing. It is no surprise. With all that is going on in the world today, I guess everyone can agree with her. It is high time that we put on the whole, the whole armor of God and work earnestly to keep Satan from gaining any further advantage. Angels of God, excel in strength, are waiting for us to call, to call on them to our aid, that our faith may not be eclipsed by the fierceness of the conflict. Renewed energy is now needed. Vigilant action is called for. Indifference and sloth will result in loss of personal re religion and heaven. And she continues, my message to you is no longer consent to listen without protest to the perversion of truth. Unmask the pretentious sophistries which if received will lead ministers and physicians and medical missionary workers to ignore the truth. Everyone is now to stand on his guard. God calls upon men and women to take their stand upon under the blood-stained banner of the Prince Emmanuel. I have been instructed, she was told, I have been instructed to warn our people for many are in danger of receiving, what? Receiving theories, our people. Receiving theories and sophistries that undermine the, found, the foundation pillars of faith. Sister White describes the crisis, descri the crisis described above. We have now before us, at that time, the alpha of this danger. The omega will be of a most startling nature. Selected Messages, Volume 1, page 9, 197. The Omega will follow and will be what? Received. Amazing. The Omega will follow and will be received by those who are not willing to heed the warning God has given. By the way, what has happened in and to our beloved Seventh-day Adventist Church. Are we now in the omega of apostasy? Will any of us be under the curse of meroz because we fail to come to the help of the Lord? Are we now in the omega of apostasy? What would be the signs of the omega? In selected messages, Pages 204 and 205, Sister White presents 
the signs of the omega of apostasy. And I will give you three of them. The first one is the principles of truth that God in his wisdom has given to the remnant church would be discarded. The fundamental principles that have sustained the world for the last 50 years would be accounted for as error. Wow. And this she wrote during the late 1800s or early 1900s. We are now in the year 2024. Seventh-day Adventists believe that the gospel has an end-time setting of present truth, concentrated in the three angels' message, messages of Revelation 14. At the heart of that present truth is our reason for existence, centered in the sanctuary message. The picture here shows a scale model of Herod's uh, temple the sanctuary during Christ's uh, time. The temple built by uh, Solomon was in this uh, same place. Now, uh, I have to check, but I was, uh, I was told that in order for Herod to be able to build and expand this temple, they did not demolish right away that original temple because a temple has to be there all the time. So what did they do? They built around the original temple. And then when the temple was, when this uh, expansion of the second temple was done, then they demolished the second temple built by, uh, by Solomon. The hour of his judgment has come. What makes the Seventh-day Adventist movement distinctive is the belief that since 1844, we are now living in the pre-Advent judgment, conducted in the heavenly sanctuary as indicated by Daniel 8.14 and many other biblical passages. Amen. Ellen White indicated that this correct, and this is what she said, this is a quotation, this correct understanding of the ministration in the heavenly sanctuary sanctuary constitutes the foundation of our faith. Letter 208, 1906. This central pillar of Adventist identity and message to the world, many of our own leaders have rejected and continue to reject. Now, she mentioned books of a new order are being written to sustain these false philosophies. Many of our ABCs carry Rick Warren's book. Have you read this book or have you scanned through this book? Rick Warren's book, very, very popular book. The Purpose Driven Life, which has been accepted, hooked, line and sinker by many of, our, many of our pastors and leaders. Elder Mostert, former president of the Pacific Union College, Pacific Union Conference from 1980 to 1985. In his book, Hidden Heresy describes the purpose-driven life book as veiled spiritualism. So many of our leaders, according to him, have been reading this book, Veiled Spiritualism. This is what he said, books of a new order. I'll come to that later on. Some of our Adventist book centers are carrying more and more outside authors. Have you been to, ABC, to an ABC store lately? No, you know, they, they, uh, they closed this one, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, the one uh, in Loma, in, uh, yeah. La, is that close? There's another one in La Sierra? Yeah. Some of our Adventist book centers are carrying more and more outside authors besides promoting some books that carry wrong philosophies. You know, you know uh, anything that we do and anything that we have, any structure that we have and any business that we have should be for the promotion of the gospel message, correct? Amen. The right gospel message. Clark Floyd, an Adventist minister, reported that when he visited ABC in New Zealand, he was surprised and saddened to see the Left Behind series. These are the Left Behind series uh, books. The Left Behind series of books for sale at the ABC store there. The Left Behind series is a multimedia franchise of apocalyptic friction, apocalyptic fiction, written by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins. You know, interestingly, let me, let me just uh, pause for a moment here. I, I, I searched, actually. I did, I did my own uh, searching last night. I did my own searching last night, and this is what, this is what I found. No, I ask, I ask my AI. Do Adventist book centers, ABC, sell the Left Behind book series? If yes, which is stores in California? It answered very quickly. The Adventist book center, or ABC, carries the full line of Pacific Press and Review and Herald products, including the Left Behind book series. You can find ABC stores in California, uh, on Washington Street in Pasadena, and uh, Lambert Road in uh, La Crescenta. And then, for the details, this, these are the sources that it uh, went through. The Adventist, first, the Adventist Book Center, North American Division, Seventh-day Adventists. Second, 2022 Spring Catalog, Adventist Book Center. They are there. And, and, th and this, is, this is what? We, we are selling. This is what the ABC is selling to the world. That's, that's not true. Hmm. Yeah, there's no ABC in Pasadena. It's in Glendale. Hmm. There's no oh. left behind hmm. series. Yeah. Uh, please call yes. the city for us. Yes. I, 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 I checked AI, and that's what they said. Just call yes. me at the hmm. I've been there many times. Hmm. OK. Yeah. I'm, I'm, if, if it is not there, okay. that's good. Because. Uh, uh, when I checked, 2022 spring, uh, uh, spring, uh, oh, okay. yes, that, that's what I said. You know, uh, I, I may be wrong, but that's what I got. But, uh, that's what I got. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Colossians 2:8 tells this. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. Books of a new order. You know, I, I thought about this. What, what did she mean by that? What else could she have meant by that? Could it be that she pertained also to computers? I don't know. Cell phones for that matter. Do you think that, they, that this could be the books of the new order, of a new order, referred to by Sister White? Do you think that for lack of a better term, more than 100 years ago, she had called computers and cell phones books of a new order? Possible. In other words, a different kind of book. Many reading materials that used to be printed on paper are now available in the internet through the computer. Uh, right? Many of us don't read the paper anymore, on paper anymore. Not all computers are altogether evil. We, we have a computer right here. I have my computer here. It all depends on what use we have for them or what materials 
we read or watch using our computers or our tablets and cell phones. Brothers and sisters, beware of these books of the new order. They're good or bad depending on how we use them. When you surf the internet, be extra vigilant because the enemy would be quick to snatch your attention and feed your mind and my mind with spiritual garbage, garbage that you and I may not be able to dispose of. What is the third sign of the omega of, of apostasy? The Sabbath, of course, would be lightly regarded as God, as also the God who created it. And this is what he said. For example, the Sabbath is being lightly regarded by many who see no problem in going to a restaurant for a Sabbath meal. There are those of us whose Sabbath activities, activities are quite questionable. What are some questionable Sabbath activities? What about watching secular TV programs during Sabbath? You know, I'm not sure if this is true, but uh, I, I heard some people were watching boxing of a famous uh, boxer on uh, Friday night. Adventists, ministers along with them. Surfing the internet, surfing, what about surfing the internet for non-spiritually uplifting material? What about celebrations like birthdays, retirement, graduation, on the Sabbath? We reason, well, you know, we're holding a celebration because God, because God has blessed my son who turned seven. Or we ha we're having a celebration because God has abundantly blessed me and now I'm retired. Or God has blessed my daughter who graduated from Loma Linda and I'd like to thank the Lord and I'd like to invite my friends to celebrate this coming Sabbath. The motive may be good. And the motive is good. But the practical reality is many times when we hold those celebrations, we break the Sabbath with all the many preparations we make and secular activities we conduct. There may be ways to minimize the preparation and celebrations spiritualized with thanksgiving and worship. Some, especially in the healthcare industry, must report for work during the Sabbath. To be on duty during the Sabbath is understandable and justifiable and a good thing to do in the interest of preserving the lives of patients. However, to intentionally request our employers to give us work assignment during the Sabbath simply because it pays one and a half times, if this is only the underlying reason when in fact we are not necessarily required to report on the Sabbath is, at least to my mind, lightly regarding the Sabbath. But if you give your Sabbath earnings as an offering for evangelism, then it is a different story because you are not on duty for yourself, you are on duty for God. Many of us are not sure what truth is because we fail to spend the time in study and prayer that we need to. We do not keep the close personal relationship with Jesus that we should have. We waver back and forth on our beliefs because we haven't thoroughly studied them out. We question 
the authenticity of Sister White's writings because we haven't studied her writings enough to know for ourselves that she truly is God's prophet for these times. We listen to some pastors and leaders that put doubts in our minds regarding her and her writings. This is what she said in Selected Messages, Book 2, page 386. Every position of our faith will be searched into. And if we are not thorough Bible students, established, strengthened, settled the wisdom of the world's great man will be too much for us. What is the world's greatest need? The greatest want of the world is not President Obama. The greatest want of the world is not former President Trump. Today, the greatest want of the world is the want of men and women. Men and women who will not be bought or sold. Forget Washington. Men and women who in their inmost souls are true and honest. Men and women who will not fear to call sin by its right name. Men and women whose conscience is as true to, the, to duty as the needle to the pole. Men and women who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. Brothers and sisters, God bless all of us that we will stand for the right at the right time. Amen. Thank you.